So, we're back with another Miraculous Ladybug video. And recently, as in a week or so or more ago, I started to notice a trend with some of my videos. I'd lost a lot of the drive and fun I was having, and I felt like I was spending a bunch of time just whinging, especially about Miraculous. And so I have tried to find a bit of a balance more recently, moving back towards, I guess, a more objective analysis sort of thing. And that's what we've got today. Ish. Because in hindsight, I think it might come across as whinging. But I really did try this time. And I just think the evidence here, it's quite overwhelming. Anyway, in the most recent episode, we've had a few elements of note. One is that Ms. Bustier is in a same-sex relationship. And two, we had more heavy teasing for Rose and Julica. But no progression. Woo! And at the same time, during my voyages across the web and the fandom, I've noticed complaints in the way that LGBT representation has been handled up to this point in the world of Miraculous Ladybug, with particular emphasis being put on the story's tendency to kind of queer bait things, and that in general it lacked a lot of the representation that a bunch of its contemporary cartoons have. And so really, that's what I want to talk about today. I want to puzzle out, is this actually a legitimate criticism? Is it something that holds water? Is it something that's actually been going on this whole time? And yeah, this one has the potential to be rather spicy. So, good luck to me, I guess. Also, let's all just make a promise right now not to flame up in the comments too hard. Okay? Okay. Maybe that is too much to ask. And honestly, sometimes in this fandom, the extreme flame wars are kind of funny. But we'll see. Anyway, I guess we better start by taking a look at the level of representation that we have so far in the show. And I'm not talking speculation or hints or suggestions, but actual overt canon relationships depicted on screen. So far, we've had almost five full seasons of Miraculous. Each season, over 20 episodes. On top of that, we've had like two full specials, each taking our heroes to fully new locations with a whole host of new characters to interact with. New dynamics, new relationships, and forgive me if I'm wrong, but from all of this content, all of those minutes, literal hours upon hours of content, I'm pretty certain there are only like two canonical LGBT relationships. Am I wrong? There's the main heroes from New York, as in the adults, and then most recently, Ms. Bustier and her spouse. Um... Her name slipped my mind, but it probably doesn't matter because she is such a minor character. I don't think that any more have actually been shown on screen from what I understand though. Like there's been hints, suggestions and all that kind of stuff, but beyond that, not much. Then there's also Zoe who had her unrequited thing with Marinette that came in in like a single episode and has since disappeared without a trace. And yeah, I'll be honest with you, for a show that really forms a core part of the modern era of animated episodic content, a show that shares a big audience with a number of other massive shows that have either recently finished or are still running, in comparison, this is kind of bad, right? Like, pretty bad. Like, I'm not trying to virtue signal, right? And I'm not trying to make a mountain out of a molehill, but the reality is, our two major LGBT relationships that we've seen on screen, they are majorly background characters. There's the two American heroes, you know, the Batman and Superman equivalents, whose relationship together resembles something out of a comic book nerd's wet dream, and who've been gender swapped, you know, so they don't get sued, and who I guarantee are probably never going to appear in any meaningful way ever again. And then there's the class teacher, which, oh yeah, Ms. Boosty has an important character per se, but in no way is she even close to the importance or the relevance to the majority of the students in the class, or indeed a number of other adult characters. To me, she feels like on the level of Marinette's parents, if that. And so in a way, her relationship is really just window dressing. And the other half of the equation, her wife, she's somebody that I don't think's ever actually appeared in the show before, right? So you see her and it's like, oh, cool, nice. Then afterwards you're like, oh yeah, yeah, you're still a character, aren't you? Okay, sure. Gonna do anything? No? And so to me, these characters and relationships do feel like they're there to just check a box. In the same way that things like Tom and Sabine are there to check the box of, yep, Marinette has parents, check. But here, it more just feels like they want to say they're progressive, and so they say, oh yeah, 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 look, the teacher of the class is a lesbian. Also, I ship Batman and Superman, so here they are as women and gay. Now stop bothering me about making the actual relevant characters gay. And so, because these are kind of background nothing characters, they have no depth. They have no interest beyond, like, a kiss. And their dynamic, I guarantee, is going to remain wholly unexplored. And I just don't see that changing. Why would you focus on these characters instead of the kids? The show's about the kids. Because, yeah, yeah, Monarch's storyline needs to wrap up and we have all the classmates, many of them with key roles to play, plus Felix, Kagami, the Alliance plot, Lila. But let's take time, a full episode, to explore Miss Bustier's marriage dynamic. 
Yeah, that ain't happening. But meanwhile, meanwhile, we get a bunch of hetero folks getting their time in the sun. There is a million episodes dealing with the show's main ship, Adrian and Marinette, and fair enough, they are the main ship. But they also have episodes dealing with their alter egos, and then with the alter egos, with the civilian personalities, and mix and matching all of that. Every possible combination. The love square. Then there's Lucanet and Adragami, Nathaniel and his short-lived crush on Marinette, Nino and his short-lived crush on Marinette, Chloe and her long-term obsession with Adrian, Lila and her long-term obsession with Adrian, Natalie and her long-term obsession with Gabe, Gabe and his long-term obsession with Emily's frozen corpse, Andre and his abusive marriage to Audrey, Tom and his wholesome marriage to Sabine, Tom's probably racist dad's failed marriage to Tom's mum, Emily's abusive marriage to her dead husband, Nino and Alia, Felix and Kagami, ish, you know that one's coming. Ivan and Milen, Kim and Marinette, Kim and what's-her-face, the swimmer, um, Ondine? Adrian and his fangirls, Rose and Prince Ali, Chloe and Prince Ali, um, Alia's parents, that one? Oh, and Jagged Stone and Julika and Luca's mum, I've forgotten her name. Is it Anaka or something like that? And then him and his assistant as well. And that's just off the top of my head. Look at all them. And many of them at least get one episode to flourish. A whole ton of them. A whole ton of these relationship dynamics make up a hugely important aspect of each episode. Bustier and the American heroes, they were just additions. They didn't really impact the plot at all. The story was about Ms. Bustier, but her wife hardly featured. And who cared about it? Ms. Bustier formed the bulk of that episode, yeah. But her wife didn't matter. And their relationship didn't matter. It was just there. And then there's Zoe. And well, yeah, they decided to do an unrequited crush thing to further the Adrian and Marinette plot. And that's fine. They took a character and they had her come out to her crush slash the main character only to get rejected and stay friends. And why did they do this? Why? Just to push forward the main ship. To show Marinette that confessing your feelings to someone is no big deal. Well, yeah, I think there were probably better ways of doing that in hindsight, right? Right? Like, damn it. Five seasons, and this is the best they could do? Like, I'm not exactly an alt-left woke machine scrolling Twitter every day on the hunt for something to offend me, but I feel like they almost certainly just default to everybody in the show is straight until they make them not straight only to score woke points. Which sounds... I know it's a pretty terrible way to phrase it, but it feels like it's true. The proof's in the pudding. Everybody's straight until they're not. But the not only comes these days when it seems like it's a more minor character that doesn't matter. Heaven forbid if it's one of the main characters or the supporting characters. Am I right? Like, maybe I'm being harsh, but let's be real. The major appeal of this show is its characters. The characters and their interactions with one another. Whilst the plot at times can be compelling, if you try to tell me that the majority of the fandom are as invested in the main plot to the same level they are as, say, Adrian and Marinette's whole deal. I will laugh in your face, and I'll call you a liar and a fool. Log out of all your accounts, shut your laptop, and go to bed. You're wrong. Or just in denial, I suppose. Because it's just so far from the reality of the situation. The popularity of this show stems from its relationships, the relationship dynamics, and the interactions between the characters. That's what drew people in. God, rewatch season one. The plot is kind of bad. It's the characters people loved. The characters that made people interested in the show itself. And so yeah, having almost no presence of LGBT characters or relationships beyond the mega background ones, or just a one-off unrequited deal, when hetero stuff is everywhere in the confines of your story, and you're constantly beaten over the head with it, to me, feels out of touch in comparison to many of its peers. It's lagging behind in so many key ways. And I think it's a massive shame. It should not be this difficult to include this kind of thing. Come on, they have so many opportunities to do it, and they just never pull the trigger. And yeah, maybe there's some other relationships that I've somehow missed and didn't notice, but I don't think there are. From what I remember, there's just not. And you might be sitting there thinking, but what about Rose and Julika? Aren't they a thing? Well, you'd think so, wouldn't you? It's been five seasons. But here's another problem we come into with the writing of Miraculous, especially in this regard. They bait your ass so hard. Specifically with Rose and Julika, every time you think, oh shit, they're gonna do it, they're gonna do it, they're gonna do it, they don't do it, they back out. And you know, most of the time it's just minor stuff. You know, they're blushing, they're awkward, you think maybe, maybe this is it, and then it's not. And you can move on with your life, because it's not that bad. They didn't bait you too hard. Until this season, when they were just like, fuck them kids. 
Remember when Rose got turned into a magical record? A magical record that makes you sing whatever is in your heart? So if you're secretly in love with your best friend, tough luck. Gabe is pulling your ass out of the closet against your will and consent. He's moved on from abusing his own child and is getting started on just all the children. What a wonderful man. Anyway, let's not let me get too distracted with Gabe. Let's get back to the story. When Rose got turned into a record, she sung about how she loves Julika. And the fandom went, oh, it's happening! Before she immediately says she also loves all her other friends. Big bruh moment. And then you just return to the side glancing and whatnot. You know, just for the rest of time, I guess. And you might be thinking, oh, well, you don't want to rush things. But at least we knew for a fact there would be progression with the hetero ships. Like, they make it clear from the get-go, there are feelings. The characters actually say these things. It is acknowledged in the story. Hell, even for our crash and burn Zoe Marinette relationship, it took one season to get to the confession point. One season. These two characters have been in the story since season one. And we are no closer to even an acknowledgement of anything. If it's ever going to happen, like, come on. On. We've even had episodes that follow their direct dynamic before. Just acknowledge it. At least. Just make sure the audience knows that yeah, 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 yeah. It's there. It's brewing. We'll get round to it at some point. But first, we've got to focus on other things. I think people could accept that. But they don't, so people are perpetually... <laughs> <laughs> blue balled I guess you know it's a crass thing to say but it's the truth and I think it's a similar concept with Mark and Nathaniel not as bad but it's still there I mean it's clear in the story there is a bit of a difference in the friendship of these two guys as opposed to a lot of the other male friendships like Kim and Max or Adrian and Nino this one it ain't as baity they don't suck you in to psych you out but at the same time I also don't understand how you have so many episodes a season. You have a dynamic that could be something really unique in the confines of the show. And then you just don't do anything with it ever. Not even a little bit. And I mean, of the entire main group of friends, I would argue that these two are by far the most underused characters of all. They have the least relevance and the least story. I just... Ah! How do you have 20 plus episodes a season, many of which have pretty nothing stories? I mean, did we really need four episodes about Mr. Pigeon, for God's sake. And yet they don't have the time to flesh out the whole host of characters that they have here. Hell, it could even be a B storyline. Remember when Nino and Alia set sail? The villain in that storyline was her dad, and they didn't even interact in the episode. Hell, the main story was about Nino trying to get with Marinette. And then there's a swerve at the end, and what do you know? There it is. That's all you need! So yeah, I don't like being preachy, but I do think there's a severe imbalance here. They've had so many opportunities to pull the trigger and unleash these ships and storylines, and none of them would actually distract from the main couple, or the main story anyway. You can have multiple plots. They've done it before. It's not like Alia and Nino's existence in a number of key episodes have ever detracted from Adrian and Marinette. With so many episodes, you have so many opportunities, so many chances, and I just feel like it's so wasteful and lagging far behind where many other shows of its era are up to in this regard. It's just, come on. So yeah, LGBT representation, it is not up to snuff in my eyes. It just ain't. So many missed opportunities. And those that are taken, they're with the minor background characters that no one cares about, or they crash and burn. And that's really not exactly the direction I personally think they should be taking here. But maybe that's just me. As after all, these have just been my opinions, and now I'd like to hear yours. What do you think of all this? Do you think the writers need to up their game in this regard? Or maybe you think it's fine, and I'm completely and utterly blowing things out of proportion here. I'm really curious for your thoughts, so make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and let me know.